Hi everyone, I'm Anna. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about some of the resources I used and how I use these resources to study for and pass the neonatal and pediatric transport nursing examination or the C and PT exam. If you missed the video right before this one, I would highly recommend that you start there. In that video, I give a brief overview of the test, the type of content that you'll see on the test, as well as talking about my approach to studying for this exam. I think you'll find this helpful as of the time I'm filming this video, there aren't a lot of resources online about this exam. In this video, I wanna talk about the details of the resources I use to prepare for this exam. The accrediting body has a study guide on their website and on this study guide, which is linked for you below, it has a whole list of resources that they recommend. Many of these resources though are textbooks and I don't think it's a good use of your time to read through a dozen textbooks to prepare for this test. So in this video, I wanna share with you some of the things that I use that I found helpful as I was studying and hopefully they'll be helpful for you as well. To make things as straightforward for you as possible, I have linked all of these resources in the description box below. I've also included timestamps so that you can jump around and find the resources that will be helpful for you. One of the most helpful resources for me was a textbook published by the American Academy of Pediatrics. In addition to the textbook, guidelines for air and ground transport of neonatal and pediatric patients. There's also a field guide that I found very helpful. This is the field guide for air and ground transport of neonatal and pediatric patients, a quick reference for transport teams. These textbooks were fantastic for the nitty gritty transport specific knowledge that you will need to know. This includes knowledge like legal information, safety considerations, flight physiology, and transport specific procedures that you will need to know how to perform. Another great resource that I used is Open Pediatrics. Open Pediatrics is a free resource affiliated with Harvard University's Boston Children's Hospital. There are two options for utilizing this resource. You can either make a free account and use this service on the Open Pediatrics website, or you can just access the videos on Open Pediatrics YouTube channel. Open Pediatrics has thousands of topics relating to pediatric and neonatal care, and all of their resources are really directed at practicing nurses or physicians in training. One of my favorite parts about the website is that when you make an account, you can keep track of all of the videos you've watched, the content you've learned, and practice these concepts with built-in quizzes. One of the best parts of the website is the various built-in interactive simulators they have available. I think one of the best simulators is the ventilator simulator. The program will take you through various respiratory models and then have you make real changes to the ventilator based on your patient's clinical features, clinical appearance, and blood gas findings. Another book that I can't speak highly enough about is Pediatric Airway Management. This reads a little bit easier than a textbook and it's a little more consolidated than a textbook, but it has virtually the same material that you would find in a textbook of this nature. If you're newer to managing and directing a patient's care in pre-hospital settings, versus hospital settings, then this is a book you definitely want to read. I think this book is single-handedly the most helpful thing that I read, the most helpful thing that I did when I first became a transport nurse and was preparing for this role. Excellent chapters in this book help with advanced procedures such as pediatric and neonatal intubations, managing difficult airways, maneuvering rapid sequence inductions, as well as a detailed breakdown on the differences in pediatric and neonatal anatomy and physiology compared to adults and how this affects and directs the care that you will provide. Another resource that I found immensely helpful when preparing for the neonatal side of the transport examination was a YouTube channel called Tala Talk Stick You. Dr. Tala is a board certified neonatologist and she breaks down various topics at a provider level which is the level of information you need to know for this exam and does this in really simplified terms. Most of the NCC study guide topics for clinical issues arising in neonatal transport 
were found on her YouTube channel. This includes topics like persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn, meconium aspiration syndrome, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, ventilator settings, interpreting blood gases, and many more. The next resources that I found helpful were resources pertaining to flight physiology. This was an area I was completely unfamiliar with until I read the American Academy of Pediatrics transport textbook when I first started transport nursing. This is the same exact textbook that we talked about first as one of my favorite and all around best resources for this test. When I first approached studying for this topic, I was the definition of, I don't know what I don't know. Reading the sections in the textbook that pertain to flight physiology and then brushing up by watching these videos really helped me get a grasp of flight physiology and what this means for pediatric and neonatal patients that I'm transporting. There are a few other random YouTube videos that I found helpful that I'll link for you below along with all of these other resources that I mentioned. Most of these kind of random resources pertain to clinical issues arising in pediatric transports. Included in this list is a great video on pediatric shock. Another video is one of the best videos I've seen describing the different types of shock that you'll also see in pediatric patients. There's a video on the pathophysiology and management of drowning patients, which was another area I was completely unfamiliar with. And finally, another great video that I've linked for you is about EMTALA laws and describes really well the type of legal information you'll need to know when taking this exam. So those were some of the resources that I used to study for this exam. As far as the actual studying goes, I know that I learned best by writing out all the information and then synthesizing that information in my brain and transferring it either to flashcards or some other system where I'm going to have to practice active recall, which is how the test works. You're required to pull information out of your brain. If you're not sure how to go about the actual studying part for this exam, I'll link a video for you below that I made about four different study myths. As you're coming up with the plan, make sure that you're not falling into any of these myths to truly maximize your study time and make it as efficient as possible. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel to not miss any nursing content from me in the future. And of course, if you have taken this exam yourself or if you have any questions, any resources that you found helpful, please be sure to put them in the comments below.